If you had the power to conduct your very own NASA-backed space research, what would you want to learn? Would you want to know about how hurricanes form? Or what about the radial relationship between the Sun and the Moon? In today's video, we are going to be talking about nanosatellites known as CubeSats, and why these objects, no bigger than a loaf of bread, could be the key to common people becoming bona fide space explorers. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to Skies TL and hit the bell icon for no notifications. Now, let's get into the video. Satellites and spacecraft are known to be massive structures that are often very difficult to build. They can cost tens of billions of dollars to manufacture and need years, if not decades, of research before they're allowed into outer space. The development of CubeSat satellites aims to not only significantly reduce the cost, but also to put this innovative space research technology into the hands of everyday people. Technological devices have always found ways to shrink down over time. A cell phone back when they first hit the market used to be as big as a brick. Today, they have been miniaturized and can easily fit in the palm of your hand. This fact is accurate for many of our modern technologies, such as personal computers, televisions, music listening devices, and now even space satellites meant to be launched into the stratosphere. Although most modern satellites reach massive sizes, they didn't start this way. When when space satellites first came about during the space race era of the 50s and 60s, they were relatively tiny and unassuming. Sputnik, the very first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth, for instance, weighed in at just 184 pounds. Explorer 1, the first satellite launched by the United States, was even smaller, weighing in at just 30 pounds. Over time, satellites naturally increased in size to accommodate more advanced technology with superior capabilities. But just like fashion trends, tech trends can work in cycles. In the late 90s, NASA began to embrace the idea of smaller satellite designs, from tiny CubeSats to microsatellites. A CubeSat is a tiny spacecraft that orbits the Earth. A single CubeSat measures 4 inches tall, wide, and deep, often weighing just 3 pounds. A standard CubeSat satellite is so small, it could easily fit into the palm of your hand. Compare this to the size of the ultra-massive International Space Station, which weighs over 970,000 pounds. A single CubeSat is known as one unit, or one U. Because they're so small, they can combine with other CubeSats like Legos. What's particularly efficient about CubeSats is that they are made from standard low-cost parts that are easy to get and safe for launching. CubeSats can reach the cosmos in several different ways. Some NASA rocket missions carry payloads that don't take up the full amount of space on a rocket. These can be used as excellent opportunities to launch CubeSats into their assigned orbit. They can hitch a ride aboard a rocket whose main purpose is to launch a larger, full-sized satellite. Or instead, CubeSats can be thrust into orbit by astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Astronauts preferred this technique when deploying a miniaturized X-ray solar spectrometer, a CubeSat that helped scientists research solar flares. Once in space, CubeSats can open up to reveal all kinds of tools, including solar panels, communication antennas, telescopes, and more. Even though CubeSats have these impressive features, their capabilities are still very limited compared to their much larger peers. You could never get a CubeSat satellite to do what the Voyager satellite or even the James Webb telescope does. Although their capabilities are greatly limited by their size, CubeSats are very focused satellites that take what they're designed to do very seriously. The development of CubeSats began as a collaborative effort in 1999 between several university professors. The original idea of the project was to create an affordable and accessible method of research for the collegiate science community. CubeSats have been able to allow universities and other teams to develop and launch their very own NASA-backed space missions. But it's not just universities that have access to CubeSats. High schools, middle schools, and even elementary schools have been able to develop CubeSat programs of their own. NASA's CubeSat launch initiative has assisted in providing these students with incredible opportunities for small-scale space exploration. For an educational institution, or any team for that matter, to obtain the resources to launch a CubeSat mission, their mission needs to meet specific criteria. Each proposed mission must demonstrate some kind of benefit to NASA by addressing aspects of science, exploration, 
innovation, technological development, education, or other operations that would be relevant to NASA's strategic goals. This initiative helps NASA find a way to develop low-cost scientific research to help bridge gaps in knowledge and accelerate spacecraft technology. One of the very first CubeSats ever launched was the AAU CubeSat. This pioneer CubeSat was built and operated by university students in Denmark. It was launched into space aboard a Russian rocket on June 30, 2003. This satellite was one of about seven CubeSats launched that day and was the only one that completed its mission. The AAU CubeSat project started in September 2001 and was meant to provide students a hands-on education with spacecraft technology and allow them to gain experience with nano-satellites. After it was launched, the satellite stayed alive for two and a half months, during which some data was received on Earth. However, it was extremely difficult to establish a solid communication link. This was thought to be because of a problem with the onboard transmitter. One of the most successful early CubeSats was the CSSWE, launched in October of 2012. This CubeSat mission was a weather research effort made by students at the University of Colorado at Boulder, with advice and guidance from leading professionals at the Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics. The CSSWE's objective was to study space weather from a near-Earth orbit. Its main mission was to address questions such as how solar flare quality relates to the quality of solar energetic particles that reach Earth, and how Earth radiation belt electrons evolve. This CubeSat was originally anticipated to only last in space no more than three months, but it surprised students and professionals alike, lasting in space almost an entire decade. In that time, however, it showed severe battery degradation, likely due to pushing the battery thousands of cycles beyond its original capabilities. As a result, CSSWE has not been able to retain enough power to receive or transmit data since 2014. Moving on to more recent missions, the Cupid CubeSat aims to answer fundamental questions about plasma physics and space weather. It was launched in September of 2021 as a collaboration between Boston University, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, and several other teams. This satellite was designed to study soft X-rays from space, imaging the boundary where Earth's magnetic field interacts with the Sun. The idea is that when the Sun is active enough, its magnetic field can fuse with the Earth in a process called magnetic reconnection. Cupid aims to demystify what the boundary of Earth's magnetic field looks like and understand how and why energy sometimes gets in. CubeSat missions have incredible plans for future explorations as well. The Lunar Flashlight CubeSat is an upcoming low-cost lunar mission that will explore, locate, and estimate the size and composition of water ice deposits on the Moon for future exploitation by robots or humans. This is an especially important mission as NASA gears up to launch their Artemis missions, which will put a man and woman on the southern pole of the Moon by 2025. The Lunar Flashlight mission, planned for sometime in 2022, will be one of the first CubeSats to reach the Moon, and the first mission to use lasers to look for water and ice. The spacecraft will be shot into lunar orbit and use near-infrared lasers to shine light into the dark regions of the Moon, while an onboard spectrometer measures the reflection and composition of the surface. There are many more CubeSat satellites preparing for launch in the future. These miniature satellites are expected to remain easy to assemble and low-cost to launch. And with the ease with which these CubeSats can be created, combined with their accessibility, anybody can have the ability to become a space explorer. What would you explore in space if you ever got your hands on a CubeSat? Let us know what you think in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Skies TL and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we post new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.